Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How'd it feel to be back in Moody? Uh, it was good. It felt better being around my kids the first chance. You know, I was in Moody um, the last game. I was in my office watching. So that was... Got that out of the way. Now I figured I got to figure out how I can not mess things up. What was the key with such a short bench tonight? Well, I think we got a contribution from everybody. You know, we uh, we played against zone for 38 minutes, go six for 23, and two of the best three-point shooters in college. You know, struggle and you know we win because I think everybody defended and competed and made a contribution. Um, I was really happy for Jure. You know, he only got four minutes uh, when we were in Tulsa, you know, because the way the game was going, shape was going so well. Um, and now, you know, he stepped up tonight. It, you know, the stats don't show what he did. He, I thought he defended really well. Um, that's a hard team. You know, they're bigger than a pro team. And they come off with bigger people. Um, and I thought, you know, every time I look up, you got Jordan and you got Ben getting double doubles. You got Sterling, you know, doing things that you don't see on the stat sheet. And then I told Nick, you know, they ran a lot of stuff for that little guard, and that he played without foul, and that kid made some tough shots. So we defended much better the second half rebounded much better the second half and that the key is you know with a short bench we got to stay out of foul trouble you know you never expected Ben Amalogu to go down and then you know you got to make a decision for Shimmy that's in his best interest you know with us not being able to go to the tournament so it's it's pretty tough and we're uh, we're trying to fight through this and support our teammates and do the right thing. Is Keith going to return? I don't know. He's dealing with some personal issues and we're going to support him and try to help him in any way we can and we'll just see what see what what happens. But um, you know you care about everybody and you want you want to help everybody but it at the end of the day, we got to support him, and what's ever best for him will have to make it best for us. What did he say to you before leaving? Did he say? Oh, uh, just his personal problems. I said deal with them and spend a lot of time with his mom. Um, and you know, this is a family. This, these guys, all care about one another, and that's that's all we can do. Let's talk about the game. Now, it seemed, well, the team struggled from beyond three tonight, but uh, Sterling had three or four tonight. How important has it been for him this year to really work on that shot and get better from long range? Well, I think, you know, when, when we play against the zone, you can guarantee that they're going to shade to Nick and, and shake. So we need Sterling and we need Jure to be a threat. You know, I want him to take open shots. We, we've been working on it. I think I don't think anybody I've been around has worked any harder than Sterling in that regard. And I was teasing him yesterday. You know, I, I coached Bruce Bowen when he, you know, they used to foul him on purpose, and um, he led the league in three-point shooting. I coached Roger Bell. You know, when I was in Philly, and we got him out of the YMCA. And he couldn't hit the floor three out of five times. And he led the NBA in three-point shooting. So he, you can work on it. And I think he has, and all our guys have. When you play with just seven guys and in a year when there's new, new ways that the officials are calling fouls, how do you teach the discipline? You only had one guy with more than two tonight. You know, if, um, did anybody watch the South Carolina-Memphis game? I think one team, there was 69 fouls called. You know, I said it the first day when they made these rules. I, I saw it start in the NBA. We didn't even talk about it. You take away the five-second count, and then you're going to call, you know, stuff that really 
doesn't allow kids to get into flow. But I don't buy it. I always said, you know, advantage, disadvantage. You know, that should be the way the game's played. But these are the rules, and we got to teach our kids to play defense without fouling. You got to guard before they catch. You got to learn to keep people in front of you. You got to keep away from gambling. You got to try to keep the ball out of the post, which is a position that you know you can foul. So it's what we're working on. We, you know, you don't want to play zone. My first year here, remember, we had five guys. We played zone. But we had a 35 second clock, and our offense was really our defense. Um, and I think in some ways we're going to have to be, you know, really disciplined offensively to take great shots, but not, you know, not stop running because I think we did, we've done a wonderful job in that regard. You know, I think Tim got us going up and down the floor. Um, you know, our big guys are mobile and can post up. So we got to put the pressure on them to foul. During those previous home games that you could only watch on TV, did you do any superstitious things like a fan, like sit in the same spot or eat the same potato chips? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm terrible uh, in terms. I don't even want to tell you guys some of the stupid stuff I do. <laughs> but you know, I was more in awe of what was going on. Um, I know people don't like to hear it, but not a day goes by that I don't look at that group and see, think that they weren't treated fairly. Um, and to sit at home and see the way they played and hear the commentators, you know, brag about, you know, what a special group they are and what they've overcome and how they've handled it. Uh, you forget about superstitions, you, you're pretty proud, and I think. I think that was the key for me for those nine games, just to hear people comment about, you know, the character of these kids. That was pretty special. South Florida had twice as many subs as you did, and you outscored them 17 to one off the bench. Surprised? Yeah, uh, I don't even. I don't think we have any subs, to be honest with you. I don't. I don't look at anybody on our team, especially now. <coughs> And I didn't, you know, when, when we were 80, I thought everybody, you know, was a starter. That's the way I look at it, but I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, but Marcus, you know, commented and Nick commented, you know, they got some talented kids out in Florida. I don't, I don't think they're going to be an easy out. You know, they're so long, you know, and got, got depth. But, you know, we have to play right now like we have seven stars. We were playing like we had eight stars.